welcome back to my channel sunshine in my code my name is so Matapeng, and i am extremely exhausted because i ran 22 kilometers this morning i feel really tired but let's get into this video so a few weeks ago when i was really really broke and staying at home i decided to make my own clone of instagram and in an effort to kind of learn react js so i made the I started working on the clone a few weeks ago and I've been working on it on and off but I eventually kind of have some kind of a solid application. It's not deployed yet but it is an interesting way for me to have learned React.js and I made this video because I wanted to actually learn how to build applications with React but I couldn't find like a really good tutorial that actually built a fully functional application. I built the application using React.js yes on the front end and django back end and that's because i am a django developer so i'm more comfortable with django so this was really just about learning react js and it's not really designed to be a like an application that can be in deployment or in production for anything but really just an opportunity for me to kind of learn react which i really enjoyed and i actually really love react now this is the Instagram homepage that I have made and it's called Fakegram and you can see here is the login button that takes you right back to the login button and you can log in as user. So I have created a couple of users in the background um, while I was testing out this application and you can actually see a couple of them. And if you actually now, after logging in, it redirects you to the home page and you can see a couple of posts by a few different users. And you should also be able to view that user's information. And we're currently logged in as Megan, which explains why we can see things like log out and edit profile. If we change this to point to a different user, for example, Siwa, um, you will see that <coughs> this is all the uh, posts that have been made by this particular user and you don't have that login and edit profile buttons that you have when you're logged in as a current user and if you actually click on an image you can see the post the caption and the user's profile so another thing that this application also has is that you can view your old profile and you can log out and you can also add an image so you can just choose an image let's go with something like this just a random image and we can then make it blurry black and white which is my favorite filter a bit brighter saturated and black and white it is no actually I may have used that let's just make it brighter and we can now post that image. A huge part of the design that I use was based off of Instagram's design. And because Instagram doesn't really have the web dip version of a post upload, I just had to be creative. And this is as far as my styling ability goes. And now you can post that item, that picture, and it redirects you to the home page. But if you refresh, you should be able to see that picture that's been uploaded by this user with the correct filter being applied to it. Previous posts, this one had a black and white filter, and this one had, I think, a saturated filter. And you can see all these posts appearing in your timeline. So your timeline will have everyone else's posts because we don't have user following yet. And if you go to your own profile, you should be able to do stuff like edit your profile and log out. You can also view more details about each of the posts that you have made. And yeah, that's it. What we also don't have is notifications. Notifications for Fakegram don't work yet. But yeah, and this is the Django REST Framework API. So I use the Django REST Framework API in the back end. And what this API just does is, for instance, the home page, as you can see in the front, is just all the images and the image information. And if you actually look at this API, what it also has is the post ID, the caption, and all this information about where it's stored and the user information so the user of the post the person who made the post and the filter that applies to this post 
and you can see actually see that information and it shows up here on the front end and this is what the user sees and this is more pleasant to look at then it's just some of this information that's not always the best. I've refreshed that and you can see that um, this shows the ID of the post, which is basically just the number of posts that we've made. This is the 37th post and the caption is this and we can see that this is actually the caption of this image and this is where the image is actually stored in my own local directory. And you can also see the user's um, ID, user's identity number, the user's name, and their profile picture. If this user had a profile picture in this case, it's just just the one we're just going with. And the username. So this is the front end, and this is where you actually see the application looking really pretty, but this is where the user data actually gets stored, making it accessible from any other thingy, any other application. And if we do something like opening up a private window, you should still be able to localhost 3000. This actually won't let you view the posts because you need to log in, but we can still log in as another user. For example, we can log in as Siwa. This user is the one with a lot of posts. Yeah, so that user can now also actually view the most recent information and that just makes it easier to manage information. So, yeah, and we can log that user out. And once they're logged out, they can't now do stuff like slash upload. That won't work anymore. It just takes you back because only users who aren't authenticated can only users who are authenticated can actually upload posts and i'll show you how we get that so i'm just going to take you on a code walkthrough of the back end and how it looks and then a little bit of the front end this isn't going to be in depth so don't get like super intimidated by it but it's just going to explain just some of the really much just like how the code actually works